Okay, so hello everyone. My name is Herman Chica Alfonso and I'm the Education and Program Coordinator for the Dementia Society of Ottawa and Renfrew County. Welcome to our webinar, um, How to Build Healthy Habits That Last. Uh, also uh, learn about the practical nutrition and fitness tips. And we're happy to welcome back our speaker today and she is Max Stickle uh, from AM Fitness. And she's also our instructor for Let's Get Moving Online every Wednesday at 3 p.m. So I uh, will turn the floor over to Mac and welcome back. All right, thank you very much. I just wanna confirm that you can see my presentation on the screen. I do, I do. All right, good news. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, I can see you, Every everything is uh, perfect. Okay, awesome, really that's great to hear. All right, thank you very much. Thanks for the welcome. All right, so I wanna welcome everyone who is uh, watching live and those of you who are here on Zoom as well. Great to have you join me for this presentation. So I'm excited to talk to you about how to build healthy habits that last, uh, including fitness and nutrition tips, because I find that over the past year, um, plus a little bit more, it's been just a year of change for a lot of people. I'm imagining your fitness routines and your eating routines have changed quite a bit. So I'm gonna be sharing some really practical tips, really good ideas, things that you can incorporate into your life starting today. So I'm really excited to share this with you. Now, before we get right into it, I do wanna share a little bit about myself and my story. So I, um, I have always worked with older adults. I started um, my, my career in the fitness world um, back when I was in university. So I was teaching aqua fitness for the city of Ottawa for a long time. And, uh, and then started teaching some chair exercises for seniors at a local community center. And what I noticed is that as people were aging, they were finding that their health was changing, that uh, maybe they were losing some strength, they weren't as motivated to move, and they were noticing some health issues coming up. So uh, as I saw this more and more, I realized there was such a big need for people to be exercising not only in their 50s, but also in their 60s, 70s, 80s, and even beyond that. So I started my business, AIM Fitness, um, back in 2013. And what we did, myself, and I had a, an amazing personal trainer who worked with me, we started going to people's homes and helping them to get active by um, doing personalized one-on-one -on -one personal training with them. So over the years, so it's almost been eight years now, we have shifted a lot. So we do a lot of online webinars like this. Um, I have an amazing membership program where people can watch videos. And, uh, and I also have a YouTube channel. So I will be telling you a little bit more detail at the very end of the presentation before the question and, and answers. But what I have found is that oftentimes we don't need to make big changes. We just need to make a few simple little tweaks. And that's where you can start to feel um, some really great improvements to your health. So as we go through this, I'm going to be sharing uh, a few steps that you can take to make healthy habits and healthy changes that will last. So step number one is to get clear on your top health goals for the spring and summer. Now, what I find is really important is not to think about the full year. Sometimes we get overwhelmed when we think about planning for the next year. We don't know what's going to happen in the next year. I really prefer to think about one season at a time. So think about your top health goals for the spring and the summer. Now I do want to mention that I am going to be providing um, to all of you who are participating um, some goal setting worksheets. So in the meantime, if you do want to get out a piece of paper and take some notes as we go through this, that will be really helpful. And then if you would like a copy of the worksheet, if you want to send me an email, I will send you all of those documents and that will be really helpful for you. So as we think about our goals, I would encourage you to think about what is your, not all, we don't want to think about 10 goals. We want to think about one, two, or maybe three. We want to get really specific. So what are those top goals that you want to focus on for the spring and summer months? And one of the questions I like to ask is this, 
If you could snap your fingers and see your health improve, what would you wish for? Now, what would you wish for? So you'll see here, and this is a copy of what you will be getting, the goal setting worksheet. Uh, on the bottom left, what are your top three short-term health goals? So this may be for the next month. What are you focusing on for the next month? And then on the right-hand column, what are your top three long-term health goals? So long-term may be the next six months to a year. So it's good to think about what those things are. Now I'm gonna help you because sometimes we think, I don't know what my goals are. So I'm gonna help you out here. So where do you see yourself in the next two to five years? I find if we think about the long term, then it helps us to think about the short term. So maybe for some of you, you're excited to get back on a bike. Maybe you're wanting to do some traveling and exploring new places. And this is very motivating to you. Thinking about being active, staying active and having the strength to be able to do that. Now, for some of you, if you go to the picture below, it's staying in your own home as long as possible. Maybe you have a home where you raised your family or where you have lots of memories. Or maybe you've recently downsized and you wanna stay there for a number of years more. And we know that in order to stay in your home, it requires strength, it requires flexibility to do those things like taking care of a home, making meals, all of that takes a lot out of you. So maybe that's one of your goals. Now to the top, um, the other top corner, we have a picture of a couple exercising together. So maybe you have a spouse or maybe you enjoy um, the group format of exercising, doing a group fitness class. And maybe you're thinking of, oh, how can I stay active at home right now? I really am a lot more motivated with other people. Well, there's so many ways you can be active at home and I'll share a little bit uh, more of those ideas and tips for you later. And then finally, maybe you are motivated by thinking about your family. So thinking about your, um, your grandkids, your children, you're excited to see them again, you're excited to do more things and to be able to help to support your family. So these are all really good goals. And I find that most people are motivated by thinking about what is my future going to be looking like? What do I want? What do I need the strength and um, the balance and the energy for? So I'm really curious and I would love to hear from you guys. What is it that is motivating you to stay active or maybe to get back into your activity? So if you do want to leave um, a comment in the chat, I would love to hear from you guys. So let me know if it's travel, if it's staying in your own home, if it's staying active, maybe with a spouse or with friends in the future, or maybe grandchildren. So let me know in the chat what, uh, what is your situation. Now, something else you can ask yourself is this, what do I want more of? What do I want more of? Now, I have been working with a lot of people over this past year and talking to so many, and lots of them have been telling me, you know, Meg, my fitness routine has just really had to change. Um, or maybe I haven't really been putting time and attention into my health, but I know that it's time because it's been a horrible year of inactivity, and it's just really time to prioritize me and my health. So I hear this all the time, especially when it comes to caregivers. So if you're a caregiver, and you're taking care of someone in your life, maybe you realize, you know what, I've been giving and doing so much for other people and now it's time to do something for me. So maybe what you want is more strength, more stamina, better balance, more energy, the ability to care for others. Because we know when we take care of ourselves first, we have more to give to other people. More time, more time for you. And we know that's about prioritizing, making sure you have that time for you or more peace. So I love this quote, doing what you love is the cornerstone of having abundance in your life. And I really have found that over this past year, it's been really important to prioritize things for myself. And I hope that you're doing the same. All right. I'm uh Reading some of these comments, this is great. Serena shares, she's excited about traveling. Someone else, better health. Matt, 
Uh, getting on a bike again. Awesome. Thanks for sharing all of these. This is great to hear. All right. Habits. So what are habits and how can they make a difference in our life? So a habit is a settled or regular tendency or practice, especially one that is hard to give up. And I like that ending, especially one that's hard to give up. So I would love to hear from you. What are some healthy habits that maybe you have developed or maybe you want to develop? I'd love to hear. So feel free to leave a comment in the chat. Sometimes we think about unhealthy habits. So you can share some of those as well. So an example of a healthy habit would be drinking lots of water every day. And I've got my water bottle here. I take it with me everywhere I go because I know that's a healthy habit I want to keep focusing on. An unhealthy habit would be smoking, right? We want to, to cut out the, the unhealthy and do more of the healthy habits. All right. So got getting some great ideas. Walking daily. Yes. Regular waking time, getting up at 6 a.m. after eight hours of sleep. Wow, Minda, you are getting up early. Good for you. <laughs> uh, all right. We have uh, a morning routine, meditation, walking every day. Awesome. I love it. But love to hear what are some unhealthy habits that maybe have been creeping into your life or maybe you've noticed other people are doing some of these things. So feel free to share an unhealthy habit as uh, we move on. All right, so step number two, this is a really, really important one that I love to talk about. Step number two is choosing one nutrition and one fitness habit per month. And you'll notice it says one, it doesn't say 20. Ooh, this may be hard for some of you. This may be tricky. <laughs> so there's a reason for this. Doing less is actually more beneficial for us. Now, you may have had an experience in the past where you said, okay, I'm going to get into my fitness routine, or I'm going to start biking every day, or I'm going to start walking every day. I'm going to do it every single day. And what happens? Well, we tend to miss a few days, and then we get discouraged. Oh, I can't believe I missed a day. And then we stop. We quit because we're discouraged. We think, oh, I didn't do it perfectly, so I can't do it at all right? Are you, am I the only one who has these thoughts? I'm sure you're on the same page with me. So what I, what I recommend is just choosing one focus for the month. It takes 21 to 30 days to build a new habit. And we, and I've actually learned, recently heard that not only does it take that long, but it helps if we do this habit at a particular time. So for instance, if you say, you know what, I'm going to go for a walk every day. One of my tips for you is to pair that with something else you're already doing. So for instance, if you go to check the mail every morning, put on your running shoes and check the mail and then go for a walk around the block. And putting those two habits together will actually make the walk around the block stick. It makes it a lot easier. Now, I encourage you as well to get really clear on what you want. If you say, you know what, I just want to have better health. Well, it's a lot harder to stay motivated if it's very general. But if you say, I want to have better health because I want to spend more time with my grandchildren, then you have an extra piece, an extra bit of motivation and a reason, a specific reason to keep going. Now, I encourage you to focus on simplicity, and that's why we focus on one fitness and one nutrition habit. And then finally, I also encourage you to give yourself permission. So what that means is giving yourself permission to go all in, to say, you know what, I'm going to do my best. If I miss a day, I'm just not going to let there be a second day that I miss. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to encourage myself. I'm going to do this. And all of these things are possible. All right, so we've got a few unhealthy habits um, being shared. Too much TV and internet. All right, that's a good one. Very easy for us just to turn on Netflix or the news and just watch and watch and watch. Another unhealthy habit is sitting for too long, watching TV for hours. All right, thanks everyone for sharing these. 
Yeah, and I've got some tips around that. If you're someone who likes to watch TV and you tend to, to do that a lot, I've got some tips for you. All right, so here's some ideas to get you started. And what I encourage you to do is to grab a piece of paper, if you don't already, write down a few of these ideas. Because what I encourage you to do is to think about four habits today that you can do. So these are our nutrition suggestions. I want you to write down or come up with your own. We're going to come up with four today together. And then right after this, we're going to do four fitness habits that you can, that you can uh, adopt as well. And why four? Well, we're going to be planning for the rest of this month. So May, June, July, and August. So we're focusing on the spring and summer. And then this is something else that you can do again in the fall. All right, so here's some ideas for you. And I encourage you to share some ideas in the chat box and write them down as well. So a nut nutrition habit idea, substitute kombucha or green tea instead of your morning juice. So juice is very full of sugar. So we're, we're wanting to get rid of and reducing some of the sugar we have. Number two, eat more green leafy vegetables. Now, if you are someone who enjoys cooking or maybe you like to try new recipes every once in a while, maybe grab something like kale and then look up some kale recipes. Try something new. Now, I love kale because you can use it in so many different ways. I quite often add it to my stir fry. I sometimes um, will make a kale salad or you can even make kale chips. And those are really good. You can bake them right in the oven. So definitely use Google, find some really great recipes and try something new. Number three, replace your coffee sweetener with something a bit more natural. So if you're someone who has your coffee with cream and a few dumpings of sugar, maybe switch to maple syrup or even agave syrup, a little bit more natural. Um, the fourth tip is to make one meal per month meat free. So again, you can look it up online or maybe pull out some of those recipe books that have been piling up or are a little bit dusty <laughs> and see what you can find. Number five, introduce a new legume into your diet. So maybe saying, you know what, I'm going to try something with black beans. There's um, a few ideas that I love, including uh, making black bean brownies. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did say that. You can make <laughs> brownies healthy. <laughs> um, and then you can also make um, different, different dishes, different casseroles. I love my slow cooker and adding some legumes into your meals can be really healthy for you. And then also making other healthy changes. So like, like I said, we're making little tweaks, maybe using brown rice and brown pasta instead of white rice and white pasta. We need to have our whole grains in our diet. So that's a really good, good help, helpful tip for you. And then finally, buying cereal that contains at least 3% fiber and has protein in your cereal as well. And just checking that it doesn't have tons and tons of sugar. So these are some nutrition habit ideas for you. And what I encourage you to do is to write down four of these or come up with some of your own. Maybe you're thinking, you know what, instead of snacking late at night, I would like to have my last meal of the day and have my last, you know, maybe a healthy snack at 7 p.m. and then not eat anything later than that. Or maybe if you are spending a lot of time watching TV, you say, you know what, instead of buying chips, I'm going to be having something healthy. I'm going to cut up some vegetables, I'm going to have some hummus, and that's going to be my new um, regular um, snack that I have when I watch TV. All right, so here's some, these are some ideas to get you started. And like I said, just choose four that you can write down now. I'd love to hear that. All right. So this is good from Minda, eat more fish, especially salmon, yes. One meal per week, meat free. Absolutely, yeah, whatever works for you, that's great. All right, someone else shares, I poach my chicken. Okay, oh, well, that's a good way to do it too. Another healthier option. Awesome, keep the ideas flowing, you guys are doing great. All right, so those are our ideas for nutrition. These are now the ideas for some fitness habits. Again, as I go through these, 
make a note of four fitness habits that you like. And again, we want to make them really simple. So let's let's see what's here. All right. So number one is doing some hand exercises while you watch TV. Again, like I said earlier, it's easier to build a habit when you uh, when you pair it with something you're already doing. All right. So you guys tell, I know lots of you like to watch TV. <laughs> so do some hand exercises. Don't just sit there, but move your body. And this will be, um, you'll feel good about yourself as you're doing that. Number two is improve your balance by lifting your foot while brushing your teeth. All right, that's a really good one. Give it a try, just make sure it's safe. <laughs> you may wanna hold on to the counter with your other hand. Number three, do five minutes of stretching every morning when you wake up. This is an excellent habit to get into. And I find most of us, when we wake up, we're quite stiff and sore in our shoulder area, in our backs, sometimes in our necks. So doing some really simple stretches, which I'll be leading you guys through, just a few really simple ones a little bit later in the presentation. But uh, that will be really good, a good habit for you to do. Now, you may be thinking, five minutes, is that enough? Well, start with it. Five minutes is better than nothing. And then the longer you do the five minutes, you're going to start to notice that it becomes easier. And the five minutes may become 10 minutes. And then the 10 minutes eventually may become 15 minutes. So I do encourage people to start by snacking on exercise. And uh, what that means is just starting with a few maybe two or three exercises, five minutes a day, and then let it grow from there. All right, number four, walk the first flight of stairs before taking the elevator. So this is good for anyone who lives in an apartment building and, or even if you have your, uh, some stairs in your house, go up and down the stairs, not just once, but try to do it two times if you're going to get something from another floor. Now, one of my clients who uh, just turned 100 years old, um, good old Jack, he is awesome. He lives in his own home and he goes up and down the stairs many times a day. And what we have started to do is we've started to calculate and track how many stairs does he do every day? How many flights of stairs? And what I printed out for him is I've got a picture of a mountain with little stars going up the mountain. So his goal right now is to reach the top of Mount Everest by going up and down the flights of his stairs. So make it a game, make it fun. I find that when you make exercising uh, really fun and enjoyable, you're more likely to do it. All right, number five. This is another really good one for those of you who are walking, heading out for a nice spring walk. What you want to do is you want to tighten your core muscles when you arrive at a stop sign. So what I want you to do right now is bring your hands to your stomach and I want you to breathe in and I want you to pull your stomach in. And then I want you to breathe out and relax your stomach. Now when you tighten your stomach in, think about doing up a pair of pants that you haven't worn in a while. That's the motion. All right, let's do this a few times. So hand on your stomach, breathing in, tighten. Breathe out and relax. Breathe in and tighten, pull in that core. Breathe out and relax. Two more times, breathe in, tighten. Breathe out and relax. Last time, breathe in, tighten. Breathe out and relax. All right, let me know in the chat if you could feel that. And what I recommend is every time you, uh, as you're walking around, um, maybe the block or if you're driving, every time you come to a stop sign or every time you walk past a driveway, do that simple exercise, tighten up your core. And what you'll notice is you're going to start to feel stronger. This is going to help your balance. It's also going to help to relieve any back pain that you may have. All right. Uh, number six, walk around your block every day when you check your mail. So I already shared that tip for you. Number seven, when exercising, do one or maybe five more repetitions than you were planning. Now, uh, right now I'm teaching a fall prevention class uh, weekly for a group of older adults. And what we do is every week we do our sit to stand exercise. This is the one you, where you sit on your chair and then get up out of your chair, you stand up 
and you sit back down. And every week we add to it. So when I first started with them many weeks ago, we did 10. That was it. Everyone was, you know, the breathing heavy. They were noticing it. They were feeling it in their legs. Now, today, we did 20. We did 20 times. And they were not out of breath completely. They were not dying because it was a gradual increase. So just remember, challenge yourself a little bit as you're exercising. All right, so I wanted to share this. I did mention very quickly about the habit of drinking more water. And this is um, actually one of my worksheets that I would love to share with you. So I will put up my email address. Um, actually, I can, yeah, I'll do that at the end. I'll put that in the chat and it will also come up on the screen. But if you would like a copy of my 30 day hydration tracker, then be sure to reach out. So what I encourage you to do is to use either a water bottle or a glass and every day, every time when you, um, when you drink, what you want to do is you want to color in one of the water bottles, one of, one of the uh, glasses here, and it encourages you to keep going. And then you can look back over the month and see how much water you've had. And are there certain days that you drink more? So that can be really helpful for you. All right, so now here's the next part. So I already told you to choose your personal habits and to write them down. So uh, if you do want to share with us what your habits are going to be for this spring and summer, please do. Like I said, I really recommend focusing on four months because then you can think of four things that you like to do and, and do them for that month. And then at the end of the month, you're going to have four new habits, which uh, actually eight technically because we've got four nutrition and four fitness. So this is another part of the worksheet that I'll be providing for you guys. But in the meantime, I do encourage you to write these down on the piece of paper that you have. So for May, June, July, August, what are your nutrition habits? What are your fitness habits? All right, now step number four is to put them into action. Quite often when we attend uh, webinars like this, we get inspired, we get ideas, we feel motivated, but what happens after? Well, you lose the piece of paper where you took the notes <laughs> and you kind of forget about it. So the best thing to do is to put it into action right away. So what I recommend is as soon as you're done, as soon as you finish up with me today, I encourage you to pull out your calendar, whether it's a hard copy, like in the picture, or maybe you use it on your phone and to actually schedule things in. Set a reminder, set an alarm if it's to get up and out of your chair and to exercise in the morning. Don't rely on your memory. Don't rely on motivation because motivation comes and goes. And sometimes we just forget when we have a busy day or we just don't feel like doing it, right? So write it down, uh, maybe putting it on a post-it note, putting it right on your fridge. Encourage yourself to keep going. Now, something else that will be helpful is telling someone. So that's why I really encourage you to share in the chat. Now, studies show that we are more likely to do things, we're more likely to build a habit when we tell someone about it. So don't just tell me, but also tell someone who's in your life. So maybe you have someone who is also on a health journey with you, or maybe you have a family member that you can tell. And then as well, invite someone. If you feel inspired and you think this is a great idea to focus on one habit at a time, tell someone that you know and they may become your accountability buddy. And then finally, commit. So we wanna say, yes, I am all in. I'm gonna focus on this, even if it's not perfect, even if I have some days that I miss, I'm still going to make this my priority for the month. And then step Five is to think about how you will feel once you reach your goals. So this is really important as well because if you can think, well, think forward a few months and you think, you know what, if by the end of the summer I feel stronger, I have more energy, I can go for that bike ride, I can go for those walks and not lose, you know, not be out of breath or not lose my balance, then that will make a really big difference for me. Think about it. How will you feel? Will you feel proud of yourself? 
Will you feel maybe inspired to keep going? Maybe not just to finish off the summer, but maybe you'll say, you know what, this is my new way of building habits. I'm going to keep going because I've done such a good job so far. So this is really important is to stay positive and to really think about what you want. All right, so at this point in the presentation, we're going to be doing um, just a few stretches together. And then we're going to continue. I have a, a, a few more things I'll be sharing uh, after. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop my screen share so you guys can see me. And I encourage you to join me. We're just going to do some very simple exercises for your upper body today. All right. So I just want to make sure that everyone can see my main screen. For men, I may need you to make me a little bit bigger, but uh, we'll see. We'll get started. So the first exercise I encourage you to do is to start by circling those shoulders backwards. We want to circle our shoulders backwards. And this is really good to loosen up um, your back, your shoulders, if you're feeling maybe a little bit, um, a little bit tight, maybe a little bit stiff or sore. So this is a really good one that you can do anywhere. And that is good news, isn't it? You don't have to do this in a gym. You don't have to do this in a fitness class. You can do all of these exercises really, really simply right at home. All right, let's go the other way. So change directions of the shoulders. Good, breathing in and out. All right, awesome job. Let's go for three, two, and one. And from here, we're going to be stretching your neck. So let's look over your shoulder. We're going to look to the left and to the right. Good. And just notice how your neck is feeling if you have one side that's a little bit more stiff than the other. All right. Okay, right, let's go for three more per side. And two. And one. All right, very good. Now let's reach those arms way over your head, getting a good stretch, and then bend those arms, bring your arms nice and low. Again, stretch, reach those arms over your head, and just notice how your arms are feeling. You may have a bit of stiffness, or maybe one arm is not quite as flexible as the other. I see that quite a lot with the, the people that I work with. A lot of older adults have limitations. Maybe it's from a shoulder injury in the past or more recent. So just do what you can. Let's go for three more. And, and two. And one. All right, very good. All right, and then one more we'll do. I referred to this one a little earlier when I was talking about adding one more uh, repetition each time. So this one is called the sit to stand. So we're gonna get out of the chair. So I encourage you to give yourself a little bit of space. Now you're going to be sitting right on the edge of the chair. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna stand up all the way out of the chair and then sit back down. Very simple, here we go. Rise up standing tall and then sit back down on the chair. And so I encourage you to join me if you're if you're watching right now. Stand tall and then sit back down on the chair. This is a really good exercise. One of my very favorites for your heart and for your legs. All right. Awesome. Now, if you want to challenge yourself, bring your arms across your chest. Very good. All right. So good news for you guys. We're not going to do 20 today. <laughs> we'll just do two more. Two more all the way up and down. And one more time. Notice how you're feeling. All right. Excellent job, you guys. That's great. That's great. So just notice if your heart has gone a little bit faster. Maybe you're feeling your legs have been working. And remember my tip about snacking on exercise. So what we want to do is we want to be moving our body at different times of the day. And that's one of my very favorite ones to do either while you're watching TV 
while you're reading a book, take a little break, or if you're at, at the desk in front of a computer. All right, so let's keep going now. All right, so I wanted to share some next steps uh, with you guys if you're thinking, all right, I'm feeling motivated. I'm feeling like there's a lot of things that I want to, to be focusing on now. Now what do I do? So what is your plan to stay active this spring and summer? So maybe for some of you, it's getting outside and walking more regularly. Maybe for others, it's getting on that bike, going for some bike rides every week. Maybe it's to go and find those weights and dust them off and start lifting some light weights and exercising with them. Or maybe like the picture on the screen, it's finding an, a, an exercise ball that you can twist and turn and you can move your body and hold on and uh, really strengthen yourself. Now, if you are looking for a way to stay active, I wanted to share something, some uh, different options that I offer, because I would love to help you improve your strength and mobility, gain more energy, and stay motivated and moving during the lockdown. I, um, I know so many people who have really had a positive year because they have committed to exercise the past year. And they have become stronger. They have become more motivated. And it's been so exciting to see that transformation. So I want to tell you about one of my programs, AIM Fitness Online. This is a video program membership that um, you can sign up for. Now, what I have is over 100 exercise and nutrition videos that you can watch at any time of day. So it's very similar to Netflix. You can stream them on your computer through uh, YouTube, and you can exercise with me right at home. We also have accountability calls uh, through Zoom with other members. And just like the worksheets I'm going to be giving you guys today for participating here, I also provide monthly calendars, worksheets, and fun images to help everyone stay motivated and to stay active. Now, something very specific about this program and all my programs is that they are for adults 50 plus and seniors. So we don't work with anyone who is 20 or 30. Our specialty is the older population. Now, I do also offer personal training. I have an amazing team of personal trainers who um, are offering this through Zoom. So this is a really great program for anyone who wants to have more accountability, support, motivation. Maybe you've had a hip or knee replacement recently, or you have a medical condition that's been holding you back from exercising. You're not wanting to damage or make anything worse. Now we provide assessments and reassessments, and um, we offer a, a six month or a one year package to work with you. So if you do want to learn more, I'll, I've got my uh, contact information on the last screen, and I'd love to book a call with you to help support you. And then finally, I also offer some weekly online fitness classes. Now, like Herman mentioned, I am teaching a class for the Dementia Society every Wednesday at three o'clock. So that's actually happening later today. So if you do want to learn more about this free class, uh, be sure to leave a comment in the chat or ask me a question at the end and I'll be sure to get to it. Now, additionally, I also offer a Monday morning and Thursday afternoon classes too. And what I love about these classes is that you get to tune in every week, you get to see other people, you really get to know them as well. And it's really motivating to see other people who are also wanting to make their health better. Now, uh, a few free resources I have. I do have a YouTube channel. Now, I was counting the other day. I'm, I'm over 250 free exercise videos. Now, these are two of my very um, most well-watched videos, one of them uh, focusing on sciatica stretches. I've been sharing this with a lot of people who are experiencing sciatica pain, and also the best posture exercises because that's another one that people are thinking, you know, how can I improve my posture when I'm sitting so much these days? So those are great videos you can watch. So what you can uh, type into YouTube is AIM Fitness and those videos will pop up. Now I also have a free Facebook group. 
um, called At Home Fitness for Adults 50 Plus. So if you are someone who is on Facebook, be sure to join my community and we do a lot of free challenges. Now, earlier on, I was mentioning about uh, walking and maybe walking is your goal. Well, I would love to invite you to join me for a free tracking challenge. So this summer, starting at the end of June, I'm uh, putting together a really fun um, way to, to track your steps, track the number of days that you go for walks. And we're gonna be doing this all summer long. So tracking for July, uh, June, July, and August, three months. And at the end of the summer, the end of August, I have some amazing prizes that uh, we're going to be giving away just for participating. So be sure to reach out if you want to know about any of these programs or offerings because it's going to be a really good summer. So I want to thank you all for participating and I wanted to just invite you to reach out if you have any questions about, uh, you know, what are the next steps? What can I do to prioritize my health this spring? And I would love to offer you a free 15 minute 50 plus health and fitness consultation. And uh, also, if you would like to receive the goal setting worksheets from today that I was referring to, including the water tracker, be sure to reach out. This is my email, meg at activitiesinmotion.ca, or you can give me a call, 613-869-3246. And, uh, and I would love to hear from you. All right, so at this point, we're going to be going um, to for some Q&A. So if anyone has a question about anything that um, we discussed today, I would love to hear from you. And what I'll do is I will put my email address and my website in the chat. So that way, if you do want to reach out about um, the worksheets, then you've got that info right there. All right, do we have any questions, any comments? Now, I know we just did a little bit of exercising today, not very much, but I would love to hear also how you're feeling after moving our bodies. All right, I'm just putting the info here. All right, so thank you, Minda, great question. Uh, thank you, Meg, sounds like a great program. My husband is very hard of hearing. Do you use closed caption? So the good news about YouTube is you can actually, um, you can actually put closed caption on the bottom of YouTube. So it will do that automatically. So uh, all of my videos are, are on YouTube. So you can do that right at home. So it's good for all of us to know. So that's a, a little, Probably it's like a little button on the bottom. You'll be able to add that. All right. Uh, Anne Marie is asking about cost. I won't be going uh, through cost right now, but if you do have any specific questions, be sure to reach out, Anne Marie. I'd be happy to chat with you. And uh, Joyce, I'm doing the uh, Dementia Society class is one day a week. So that's on Wednesdays. That's today. And yes, you can go through the Dementia Society website. And I'm wondering about, um, Herman, I'm wondering if you can share the Dementia Society website in the chat. That way yes, people can sign up for the class. Absolutely. So you can join us every Wednesday at 3 p.m. with Meg. Yeah. It's very fun. Yeah, it was love so much fun. Quite often we use water bottles sometimes uh, to exercise with. In our weights or um, canned goods. And we also often use pillows. So we have a lot of fun and make it a, an enjoyable class. All right. And then someone else is interested in the summer walking tracking program. Would I find that on the AIM Fitness website? Um, send me a message. So you guys are actually one of the very first ones to hear about the walking program. So I have not officially launched it yet. So if you want to be on my list, because uh, we're going to be starting that uh, signups next week, send me an email. You can uh, reach me on my website, send me a message there, and I would be happy to add you to our list. All right, awesome. Yep, yeah, so there's a few of you interested. So same thing, that would be great. 
We've got the dementia, dementiahelp.ca for the, the weekly Wednesday class. We'd love to have you guys join. I'd love to see you today. We are, um, we've got room in the class and we've got three o'clock. Um, and Joyce, if you're interested in the other classes on Monday and Thursday, if you go to my website, activitiesinmotion.ca, then there's a, a page that talks more about those Zoom classes and the cost and all of the dates and details are right there. All right, Minda, thanks. Great. Yeah, send me an email about the worksheets. That's great. All right, and Catherine, okay, thanks for your, your email. If you don't mind sending me a message, that would be a little easier. That would be awesome for me. I would love to have you guys join the walking list. Yeah. Now, uh, just a, one more detail about the... Um, one more detail about the, the walking challenge that I'm doing. So it's free. You can sign up. Every single week, I'll be sending you an email on Mondays with a little fit tip for you. So it'll be a really simple tip um, that you can then incorporate into that week. And, uh, and then as well, I'll be sending out some worksheets so you can track either how long you go for a walk. Because for some of you, you may be saying, okay, I'm going to go for a 20-minute walk every day. Or for others of you, you may have something like a Fitbit or you may have like a step tracker. I just got this for my birthday last week, so I'm excited to track my steps with this. Um, but if you don't have a step tracker, don't worry because you can still track um, how long you go for those walks and going for, the, for them daily. So that will be a lot of fun. All right, any other questions before we finish up? All right. Well, I want to thank everyone for participating today. It's been a lot of fun. I hope that you are feeling motivated. And um, just to, in closing, I encourage you to really think about simplicity when you think about your fitness and nutrition. So think about choosing one goal. Now, maybe some of you today will say, you know what, for the rest of the month, I'm just going to focus on having more water every day. And that would be my recommendation if you're thinking, okay, what's the first step? Which, which is the best, um, you know, habit to start with? I would recommend having more water and then also going for more walks and uh, making those your focus for the month of May and then going from there. All right. Thank you, everybody, for being here and for participating. All right. Well, thank you, Meg, for this uh, great tips and for your energizing uh, presentation and thank you everyone for joining us so don't worry if you miss something or you want to watch it again or even if you have to uh to uh to log off the call but you're gonna watch this video again we're gonna have this on on demand so don't worry it's gonna be available on our youtube channel so you're gonna receive a link to watch it again so again thank you for tuning in and we we invite everyone to join the uh mexico uh Let's get moving session on Wednesday at 3 p.m. So if you have any question or you want to connect with us, you can also email me, uh, I'm the program coordinator, or you can also email Zoe, our um, program assistant, so we can help you out to how to log in and how to uh, connect with the Dementia Society and how to join the exercise class that we have. Uh, also, i like to invite everyone tomorrow on Thursday, May 13th, 2021 at 10 30 a.m we have our workshop the caregiver self-help experience using reflexology and it's going to be more a hands-on workshop uh, following the webinar that we have last month on reflexology so for more information on education programs and or even support visit our website dementiahelp.ca as meg mentioned so dementiahelp.ca, or also you could register for a weekly roundup and get more information on a weekly basis and get our calendar, calendar and our weekly activities that we offer. So uh, have a good day, everyone, and stay healthy. Bye, Meg. Bye-bye.